From a legal perspective, legal considerations are really critical in ensuring your organization is protected and compliant throughout the incident response process. So first and foremost, having a breach coach is one of the most critical aspects. And again, shameless plug here, but an attorney that understands cybersecurity is gonna help you to get back to business as fast as possible and ensuring you're meeting all of your regulatory or statutory obligations. Attorney-client privilege is a big aspect of that, but also the ability to quarterback the incident response. The breach coach is essentially the quarterback who, who leads the incident and coordinates all aspects of those external parties that have been hired on your behalf. They coordinate the different teams, whether it's security, IT, communications, crisis communications, and then also with your management team and interfaces with your general counsel. Ensuring that the, they, the breach coach's responsibility is to ensure that the response is cohesive and legally sound. Compliance is another key aspect that it helps to ensure that statutory, regulatory, and contractual obligation. And contractual is not something that many organizations think about when an incident occurs. You think, what do I need to do under statute? What do I need to do in my specific industry? But in a lot of cases, more and more companies, vendors, partners, customers are including in contracts a requirement for notification if any of their data has been compromised. And that notification period can be 24 hours from the date of the breach itself. It can be 24 hours from the date of identification. Knowing what your obligations are under your contracts is also important to ensure that you don't fall in breach of contract. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Gray. Thank you, Mike. There's, as a matter of the overall preparation piece, there's gonna be a lot of action and, and work that takes place well before this stage uh, in, in the securing of the insurance applying for the insurance, negotiating the insurance, et cetera. What we're really going to focus on today is once we've got that, you know, how does that interrelate with regards to the incident response plan? And Mike had a good point earlier. Even if we don't have insurance in place, you still need to focus on some of these key things with regards to who, who your breach coach, your uh, incident you know, response folks, and, and you know, other key actors along the way with regards to recovery are identified. So. First and foremost, you know, from an insurance perspective, all of the insurance companies either have a predetermined panel of responders or they will allow you some flexibility with regards to selection of people, you know, with, within a particular list of these predetermined folks. My recommendation is whether or not you have specific contacts, if you can identify those people to help you put this game plan in place, get those people pre-approved, let's identify them up front so that in the event we have a crisis, we're not looking around, you know, wondering who we call next. If the vendor is not pre-approved uh, by the insurance companies, a lot of times they, we will not have coverage or the, the payments will be reduced uh, with regards to the reimbursements on that. So if you need assistance getting that done, your insurance broker agent should be able to help you with that. The, the second key piece is really understanding your coverage. Right? The, the cyber policies are becoming more and more common with regards to the, the breadth of the coverage, but it's still a very sophisticated coverage offering multiple aspects of both third party and first party risk exposure uh, coverage. So understand your policies, understand how each of those seg segments is going to react, and then also understand your obligations with regards to reporting an incident versus you know, what we know is a claim, right? because there are some nuances with that. And then lastly, as we are putting together the incidents response plan and going through the tabletop exercises, make sure and include the insurance process as part of that uh, transaction in response so that we're not skipping steps. Thank you, Gray. I'll take over from here. So uh, let's talk about the IT preparation. Now, IT preparation is going to require a few things from you. That's knowing where the data in your environment exists and knowing the, the different workflows that are necessary for your business to conduct business itself. Now, on top of that, you're going to need to know the different standard IT security tooling, toolings that's protecting your environment and put them in place. For instance, immutable backups, which would protect you from ransomware. Industry standard uh, tools like MDR, SIM, S, uh, or SOC as well as conditional multi-factor authentication. Finally, you wanna make sure that you have a incident response plan in place, and more so not just an incident response plan, but a business continuity plan to ensure these workflows are maintained so you can continue operating even if you're impaired uh, from any kind of adverse event. 